How's it going everyone? Got a ton to talk about today in terms of free updates and free content being rolled out. Resident Evil 4's major free update will be dropping on December 8th and a standalone demo will be coming on the same day. We'll talk all about that. Cyberpunk 2077, while it got its update 2.0, while it got Phantom Liberty, the updates aren't going to stop and another major update is going to be coming with Cyberpunk 2077 Ultimate Edition releasing as well. We'll talk all about that in Lorian Studio has a bit of an update on the latest patch for Baldur's Gate 3 and buckle up because uh if you don't have the storage space it's gonna be quite the undertaking we'll talk that at the end of this video but first of all Resident Evil 4 remake the VR component will be out on December the 8th as a free download if you already own Resident Evil 4 the VR components always free and it will be the case with RE4 as well. There will be a standalone PSVR 2 gameplay demo that will be available as noted on the PlayStation blog. Coming from Kyle, uh, Kyle Burleson, PR manager at Capcom USA. Hi there, PlayStation blog readers. The wait is almost over. Resident Evil 4 VR mode releases on PlayStation 5 on Friday, December the 8th. This free DLC brings a new level of immersion to the main story of Resident Evil 4 using the unique capabilities of PlayStation VR 2. Read on for a preview of what to expect. A little bit of the preview notes. To recap, RE4 VR mode is a free DLC for Resident Evil 4 and on its release on December the 8th, it'll allow you to experience the main story of the game using PSVR 2. Stepping into the shoes of United States agent Leon S. Kennedy in VR as he races to rescue the president's daughter, you'll experience an entirely new level of survival horror immersion. Resident Evil 4, which has sold over 5 million copies since its release this past March, I honestly think it should have sold well over that. It's available on every, uh, every platform. It's a fantastic game. Go buy it. It should be at 8 million by now. Uh, the game takes the core of the original 2005 masterpiece and reimagines it using the latest technology. In VR mode, you will dive into the game's world and face crazed villagers, huge creatures, and battle against Leon's ultimate nemesis with a level of intensity that cannot be experienced on a traditional display. In addition to stunning VR visuals, 3D audio increases your immersion even further, making you feel as if you're right in the game become the main character, the same dev, uh, dev team that brought you the incredible full-length VR experience of RE7 and RE Village, have worked to make a truly immersive VR mode using the latest technology. If you haven't tried RE7 or Village in VR, highly recommend you to do so. RE7 was one game that I had like a non-gamer friend try it out, and uh, they completely bugged out playing the game. Like, that's one of the cool things about VR. If you want to get a non-gamer into gaming experiences, VR is always one easy sell. Like, the e it's the easiest thing to sell non-gamers on being like yo just check it out and you know they'll check that out and it's a good gateway to get non-gamers into gaming at least at a slight level and then you can build your way uh from that all of the weapons from the main story are represented in incredible detail and with intuitive controls to ensure you remain immersed at all times in addition to these controls the sense controllers offer haptic feedback which feels unique for each weapon be it a pistol submachine gun rifle or even combat knight combined with the intuitive feel of aiming and shooting in the VR, the combat experience is more visceral than ever before. Outside of combat scenes, you also have the variety of puzzles and whatnot, which puzzles in RE4 are fine. Uh, there's also going to be a VR mode gameplay demo that is going to be offered, the PSVR 2 demo, which is available alongside the VR mode DLC on December 8th, lets you experience the start of the game and get a taste of the incredibly immersive survival horror gameplay that awaits. That'll obviously be a free download. They have a message from the creators attached as well that I won't go over, but I'll leave in the description box below if you do want to check that out. RE4 Remake, as I've uh, talked about all year long, in the mix for my game of the year. I think the game is tremendous. You're talking about one of the greatest games ever created with Resident Evil 4. 2005's game of the year for many people. Remade. What happens when you remake one of the greatest games of all time? Guess what? It's one of the greatest games of all time, and especially with the RE2 remake standards, RE4 uh, was a no-brainer that it was going to be excellent, and guess what? It is excellent, and it's going to have a quality VR component come early December as well, so definitely be excited for that, as it'll be dropping on December the 8th. The game these days goes on sale for like $35 to $40. I believe during Black Friday, it was as low as 30 um, at that price point. Come on, guys. It's so good. I understand Resident Evil isn't going to give you the lengthiest, um, you know, single run campaign in the world. You can complete RE4 in, you know, 12 to 15 hours, but there's replayability. It's so good. Again, in the mix for my game of the year. And uh, the only reason it probably won't be my game of the year is because it is a remake. I mean, I got to take some points off of that, I guess. But, uh... 
yeah, definitely among my top three to five. Uh, next up, Cyberpunk 2077. Major update coming for this game, as noted on Twitter. On December 5th, the same day Cyberpunk 2077 Ultimate Edition hits the shelves, we'll release a free update 2.1, introducing new and hotly anticipated gameplay elements. To learn more about the update, there will be a red stream December 1st, 4 p.m. Central Time. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, the Ultimate Edition for Cyberpunk 2077 will be dropping on December the 5th. And, uh, you know, $60 gets you Cyberpunk 2077 and Phantom Liberty. Is that necessarily a great value at this point? Probably not. Like, Cyberpunk 2077, you can get a physical copy for 20 30 bucks easily. Um, and Phantom Liberty is 30 bucks, So $60, you know, it's the standard price point. However, now that they're dropping an Ultimate Edition a little bit quicker than I had thought it was going to come, um, this offers the opportunity... For those of you that are super patient to wait on this to go on sale as well. Look at what happened with Witcher 3. They dropped the Game of the Year edition or the Complete Edition as they called it. Um, and that eventually went on sale and that's readily available for 15 to 20 bucks. It used to be available for $10 but then the upgrade came out and they hiked up the price. The sale price I should say. It's going to take a while for the Ultimate Edition of Cyberpunk 2077 to get to 10 to 15 bucks. But when it gets down to 30 or even 40 that's going to be worthwhile. Like, that's going to be a really solid pickup, all things considered, for a game that has just made incredible strides over the last three years. And I've been vocal about the fact that I didn't even think it was that terrible when it came out back in December of 2020. Did I think it was at the level of Witcher 3? No. Um, did I think it was an abomination on PS4 and Xbox One? Yes. You do have to play this game on PS5 and Series X if you're going to play it on console. I played it on PC at launch and had a decent time with it. Like, I thought the game was okay. I didn't think it was, like, a blow away, but, um, after after the game got delayed 8 billion times, I kind of had it in my head. Okay, that's a red flag, and uh, that probably means that the game is going to have some problems, and it certainly did. But, um, yeah, if you had the expectation level that a lot of people had with Cyberpunk 2077, where you, or you were expecting the second coming or something like that of gaming as a whole, you're expecting it to, you know, fix your broken relationships or whatever, fix your life as a whole. Um, yeah, that's not going to happen with any video game. But at this point, it's a pretty damn good RPG and one that, uh, you know, everybody is, uh, I would say, raving about, so. Yeah, and the Phantom Liberty was received really well. Probably gonna be a long time before we get the sequel to this game. Project Orion, I believe it's called. Uh, that might actually be a 2077 release, but nevertheless, pre-orders for that are live, of course. A bummer on PlayStation, where it is a digital voucher code for Phantom Liberty and not on disc like it is with Xbox Series. Looks like that's more of an issue on the PlayStation side of things, but what can you do? Lastly, I do want to know, Larian Studios, uh, the developers behind what I am guaranteeing you guys is winning game of the year. Zelda, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, they ain't winning. Baldur's Gate 3 this year is winning. I think that is a formality at this point. If you're not seeing that coming, I don't even know. And they probably deserve it, even as somebody that's been vocal about the fact that Baldur's Gate is not my kind of game. I am going to give it another shot at some point, but I played it at launch on PC. Didn't get really into it. My buddies, everybody I've talked to that has played this game has loved it. I just had a conversation with somebody, uh, I think it was two, three days ago go and we were talking about Baldur's Gate 3 and I asked him what he thought of it and immediately he's just like if anything else wins game of the year they are high out of their mind but you know it is what it is like people that like this game think incredibly highly about it it's available on PS5 now and Larian Studios noted patch 5 is launching soon this update will clock in at roughly 30 gigabytes 30 gigabytes for an update and will require approximately 130 gigabytes of free space to install I think that's the entirety of the game that I would imagine if you find yourself without the space to install the update we recommend uninstalling bg3 and then re-downloading the patch version so i guess actually no you need the 130 gigabytes of free space to update it then if you don't have that space you the the option is either get that space by deleting other stuff or uninstall Baldur's Gate 3, have 130 gigabytes, and then you can download the patch version of the game. Kind of weird how that works, but uh, yeah, I know there's also a physical copy coming out that people are super excited for, so you know, this is one of those instances, much like Alan Wake 2, where I can objectively assess that that game, uh, I can understand why people love it. I can understand why people love Baldur's Gate 3. I have my own subjective taste. There are games that I like. There's games that I dislike. Hell, there's games that weren't reviewed well that I was very, uh, I was very into and I really enjoyed. That's just what it's going to be. You know, gaming is going to be uh, a little bit of subjectivity is always going to be attached to it. But the reason I'm saying that this is going to win game of the year, first of all, like, 
Uh, it, it's a multi-platform title, so it, it's not gonna cause a lot of rage or anything like that. We give it to Baldur's Gate 3. It's from a studio. Larian isn't that well-known. At this point, PlayStation first-party games like Insomniac, they're well-known. Let's give Larian some credit for, like, they crushed it with Divinity Original Sin 2, and by all accounts, they've crushed it with Baldur's Gate 3. Give Larian that credit, give them that shine, and, uh, it'll be well-received, I think, for this game to get Game of the Year. You're really, like, who's gonna give pushback? Like, oh, Spider-Man 2 should've won Game of the Year. Like, probably not. Probably not, guys, over Baldur's Gate 3. And uh, as much as I love RE4 Remake and it's in the mix, like, give it to Baldur's Gate 3 over a remake for sure, even if it's one of the greatest remakes ever created. But that'll do it for me. Again, speaking of the greatest remake ever created, it'll be getting its VR component on December the 8th as a free DLC. Cyberpunk 2077 getting a major free update, update 2.1, alongside its Ultimate Edition release on December the 5th. And Patch 5 coming soon for Baldur's Gate 3. Roughly 30 gigabytes, so uh, buckle up for that one. But that'll do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.